Hey Brassico and welcome back to my channel. Today I really want to talk about season finales, story endings, series endings and how they affect me and you because this is a discussion. So I'm one of this weird, rare people that struggle to finish things. I can postpone watching a season finale for years and years. For example, I'm an avid viewer of TV shows and I can name only a few that I've actually finished. I don't really want to know how they're going to end because I'm afraid that I'm not going to enjoy the ending. And also, if we talk about high stakes fantasy series or high stakes thriller, crime dramas, I'm scared that my favorite characters are going to die. Not knowing what's going to happen to them in the finale gives me an opportunity to believe that they're still alive and sort of living somewhere. I do understand that it's weird because these fictional characters have not lived in general, but my brain somehow believes that if I wouldn't be given a certain information, it means that it never happened. If something similar is true to the way I perceive things, not just fictional stuff, but real stuff, which obviously is a part of, and is a bit of a deeper topic that I want to talk about here in this video. But with books and series and movies, it turned into such a laughable thing that I am ashamed to tell people that it took me years and years and years to finish the last Harry Potter book. I just couldn't force myself to pick it up, even though I really wanted to know what's going to happen. I dreaded the knowledge of my favorite characters suffering or getting injured or dying because knowing that they're dead kind of makes it final. Because of this, I own on my e-reader and physically so many third books in the series that I've never finished it's becoming embarrassing. For example, I still own Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lenny Taylor and I have not read it yet and it's been around three years. I really enjoyed the series and I want to know what's going to happen, I just don't want to read the ending. The other good example is Bright Reburn by Kirsten White, which was one of my most anticipated books. I really wanted to know what's going to happen with the characters because I'm very attached to them. But that is also a coin with two faces because I'm attached to them, I'm invested, I want to know what's going to happen to them, but I also don't want them to die or to suffer from something. I have to get on that. It's obviously a thing that I do at this point. I now am re-watching certain series to watch them till the end and trying to break this pattern. What I'm trying to say here in so many words is I have not finished a lot of series, so my examples for this video are going to be very limited. What I really want to discuss in this video is how the ending of a book can actually make or break it. I've read a couple of series recently, which I finished, which is an achievement, and I would like you to congratulate me on it in the comment section, because I deserve it. And in this series that I've recently read, I've noticed one thing. The endings of those books seriously affected my enjoyment. Let's take The Cruel Prince, for example, because a lot of people read this book. I read it as a book, so I have nothing to show you. The first book, The Cruel Prince, was literally made popular by the clever ending. My personal experience with it, and I think a lot of people share it, is I've reached 60% of it and I was becoming restless. Even though I enjoyed certain dynamics in the book, because they were very unusual, I still couldn't understand why people are so obsessed with these books. And then I reached the ending and it pulled the story together. So you had to be patient to understand and enjoy this book. Albeit there were a lot of crumbs throughout the story that made me interested, hooked me, and overall convinced me to not give up on the book. But that ending solidified the book as something special and original. And the ending apparently can do that. Before that book, I was kind of in the camp of if the whole book is kind of okay, the ending is not going to change anything for me. And I was proven wrong. When it comes to the third book in the series, The Queen of Nothing, which is obviously the finale of the series, is the weakest book out of these three. And somehow still I'm thinking about these books and it didn't diminish my enjoyment of the series overall, which means I was attached to the characters and the story so much I was willing to forgive 
the week ending. The same thing for me actually happened with Rune and Rising and the Shadow and Bone trilogy in general. What I like about it is the atmosphere and the world building because obviously it's the only original thing here and even though a lot of the things that were taken from Slavic culture and included in this book are completely wrong. I still really liked it. I actually made a video about all the inspiration that Libra Dugu probably took from Slavic culture when she was writing this book, so you can check it out. The ending of this book is famous for being terrible. Even hardcore Shadow and Bone stans don't like the ending. And there are two reasons for it. Uh, Alina, the protagonist of the book, ends up with the person they didn't want her to end up with. Which was not my problem. My problem with the book was that, spoiler alert, she loses her power. And her ending with Mal after that sort of seems like all of the stories about women dropping their careers for a husband. Surprisingly, even though I didn't like the last few chapters in this book only, and didn't like Women of Nothing in general, because I've had issues with it in every single chapter, I still have more bitter feelings about this than the Queen of Nothing and the Cruel Prince series in general. Why? I cannot even explain you. Maybe because Queen of Nothing and Like Rain and Rising gave me everything I wanted, it just didn't execute it well, and this completely crushed my expectations and I felt like the ending was unjust if the order actually likes her protagonist. Am I being unfair? I don't even know, it's just my feelings. I also want to talk about Harry Potter because it's still painful and I still feel bitter about it since we're on the topic of series. The epilogue of Harry Potter is such a slap in the face, even though most of the characters mentioned in the epilogue sort of get the happy ending. But I think it's my personal preference again. I would have preferred an ending that is a bit weak or that doesn't look that far into the future. For me, Harry Potter was a youthful series. It's a series that I look back to when I think about being young myself and holding on to that. And knowing that they get old and have kids ruins the romantic feeling that I have about these books. I don't want them to get old and boring and have kids. I want them to be young forever. So that epilogue really affected me. I skim read it because I couldn't read it properly, I didn't want to. I seen it in the movie though and it was such a mood killer. When I think about the series, I want to think about adventure and magic. I don't want to think about household stuff, about bills and about making dinners and about having babies. I want to remember exciting things and kind of imagine that there is a world where just being in the state of adventure and magic and fun, well some of it wasn't fun but you know what I mean, could be possible. It didn't ruin the whole series for me obviously but I prefer to not think about it so I ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. For me they never got married, never had kids, for me they're still the students of Hogwarts, they never grew up. Another type of ending that I feel like a lot of people have issues with but unlike many people I don't have issues with wow, we found a thing that I don't have issues with in this video is the weak ending. I feel like a weak ending has to be done right. In certain books it just works, in certain books it just doesn't. If it has a very complicated plot, if it's a mystery novel, for example, like The Night Film by Marisha Pessel, you can easily break it with a weak ending. But, in my opinion, this ending, even though it was pretty open, worked well. Because never ever in the book Marisha Pessel told us explicitly that she's going to give us an answer, which is why I really like the weak ending here. And like the ending in The Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, which actually is pretty final, it's pretty clear, but it's not the ending to the mystery that I actually wanted to solve, which is not Maureen Johnson's fault because it is a series, but making a series out of one mystery is a bit stupid in my opinion. So with this book I felt like Maureen Johnson was leading me on. She was constantly telling me that I'm going to know by the end of the book what happened and who's the killer 
and she didn't because she investigated another mystery instead. Sometimes giving a serious and overall huge mystery works, especially in TV shows. A good example for this is Elementary, which is an adaptation of Sherlock Holmes. There were huge mysteries, huge cases that took half of the season or two seasons, but they were so personal and so important to these characters that I never believed they're going to solve it in one episode. So the promise that at some point they're going to solve it was enough for me. And I was satisfied with one episode, one crime format. The case of Truly Devious, in my opinion, it was just not as successful. There's another type of ending that I feel sometimes can be a bit manipulative and I'm talking about it after Truly Devious for reasons. I do feel like the ending in Truly Devious is a bit manipulative. It forces you to read next book, so it's kind of a cliffhanger but not really. Another book that committed the same sin with the cliffhanger ending is A Lesson in Thorns by Sierra Simone, which is also a book I've read recently. It's an erotica novel, but it's logs, it has a very weird pacing, not a lot of things are tied together very well, and the characters are supposed to be lovable out of thin air, but it has a certain addicting quality about it. So you read it till the end. And the ending is actually one of the most interesting things that happens in the story. And I guess it's going to pull some readers in and they're going to read the second book, but some, like me, are going to feel manipulated and they're going to drop the book. Which makes me question if it's a good writing technique. Although all the newbie writing articles always tell to insert as many cliffhangers as possible in every single chapter as an incentive for the person to read further. I don't necessarily believe that it's the only technique. You can develop your characters, you can make them interesting. A lot of people gravitate to worlds and relationships and characters and the cliffhangers are not that important to them. I'm also one of these people. But I do think that different things work in different books. I feel like this video was just a word moment. I just really wanted to talk about this. In the comments down below, tell me about the ending that disappointed you or the ending that surprised you and made you love the series. I would really love to know about this case specifically because it always fascinates me how an ending can turn things around. Let's talk more about finales and story endings in the comment section. That's it. That's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon with another one. But until then...